Just testing, testing here from Megal. Uh, Megal calling all of them. If anybody's tuned in or listening on the ACC site or any other uh, WhatsApp group, just let us know that you're receiving us loud and clear. Formerly won the toss. Rocky's chosen to bat. shade on the ground for the start.
Rocky off and running. Trademark uh, nudge off the hip. This is one of the Rashid brothers uh, running down the hill. If you watch his run up, there's a distinct uh, stutter about now as he comes up the hill towards us and climbs to the top of his bowling position. Prime seats here. Made all glorious morning. Farmland, strawberry fields, small crowd building up. Ticking over at five and over at the moment. What's to come?
Go Crocky, mate.
Greetings from Sunny Meagle. I think I have I can pronounce it correctly, Meagle. Here we are. I'm just getting confirmation of the uh, pronunciation here of this delightful little village. I am, as, as I come on here, Steve Charles chips one up, leading edge, and he's gone. Courtman off. Nice brisk start there, 38 now for one of six overs. Crocky going well. They've fed his. His stroke, uh, the, the flick off the hip, and Steve Charles has been in lovely pink all season, as we know. From down Albany Way comes trudging up the hill. There's quite a hill to climb, and it's a long walk for Steve. He's obviously not happy. He sets very, very high standards and spends hours and hours working on his game. But he'll come back with the ball in hand later on. Crocky's calling for a drink. It's that kind of day. Greetings to anybody in Albany who's listening. Thanks, Ralph Walker, for confirmation that the uh, the feed is up and running. I have no idea whether you can hear me or not. And uh, I'm going to go on and off air every now and again in the name of uh, propriety, I think, is the expression. In comes Alex Reed, run out unnecessarily yesterday, so he'll be itching to take advantage of what look like bat in friendly conditions. Yeah, 
shout out for some of the messages coming through on the Albany social media site. Uh, hope you're feeling better, Chairman Jimmy. I know you're following and watching from home. Look after yourself, mate. And four buyers come screaming up the hill towards it, running into an old roller that looks much like Charlie's. Phil Jones, nice to know you're watching. Big righty, Richard righty. Switching between screens. Probably still enjoying the rugby from yesterday. Thank you. Right. 
Julie, Julie Roberts. Always nice to have your support. Thanks, Julie. That one's gone through a slightly slippery pair of hands in the gully. And hold up just short of the boundary. Still the clamping across the, uh, the netting surface, which is protruding onto the ground there. Lovely ground. Must be all over a 50, 60 cars all drawing up in position along the what is the leg side boundary to the, the right hand of batting at this end. Alex Reed. Get the feeling that the, uh, the feeling side of feeling the heat at the moment. Not much rattle going on. But they know their ground and their conditions. They're in between 20 years of past all here. That's our first target. Glocky looking imperious at the moment. And I think I better I better close up there because on the whole it's a kiss of death. So keep watching, keep tweeting in. Keep the Albany flag flying. Somebody has to, yeah. But also, it's, it's a problem for the keeper, isn't it? Yeah, right in the way it's done. What benefits anything about winning from the front end? Yeah, yeah. You can always stand at the top of the slope and have a dime, right? Yeah, just take a closer look at where their slips are starting. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I guess so. More concepts. There we go, I forget. Okay, from there, it's bound to look like I was saying he doesn't think. Good luck. I was saying he lost and missed the game. And he had to go way, way back. Mommy's helmet! You know, all the time he's.
Good, mate.
Drive a hand with a screen guy.
Yeah, run in, boys. Crop. Two of them, and you'll be a new man. Yeah, 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 yeah,
water there. Yeah, I need. Hottest I've ever been in my entire life. Is that a cat? Guys, guys, let's see.
के लिए थोड़ा सीधा आ रहा हूँ
Afternoon, Albany. Coming to you from Meagle, 104 foot two. You can probably see that on your YouTube screen. 
getting lots of messages from people watching here, there, and everywhere. Shout out to uh, my brother who's watching the Salzburg Grand Prix and the much more interesting business of the uh, Village Cup. Yeah, sunny, sunny Scotland. Big right, he's probably tuned in by now. Managed to find the right knobs there, righty. Jimmy, we know you're watching. Finding your own ball by ball commentary. You feeling better, mate? Peter Young probably playing as we speak at Upton. Good luck, lads. Twelfth man here bears a remarkable resemblance. The Meagle Twelfth Man, a remarkable re resemblance to Angus Young. Fifty years today, Angus, congrats, boy. Meagle moved quite quickly to taking pace off on this wicket. Uh, wicket itself is capable, I think, of producing up and down two pace bounce. Interesting to see what happens when Chris, uh, Jimmy and Sam bend, bend their back and show us some real pace which we haven't really seen on display today. The, the Rashid boys open one from each end and decent uh, medium pace bowlers but nothing too terrifying. Crocky's booked in for bed and breakfast there. Sitting on 41, not out, 20 overs gone. 105 for two. We've taken one early drinks break and we'll probably take another one. It's a thirsty work out there. Every now and again you see the effect of the slope. wicket itself, um, extended pitch is on a sort of table crown, and the field slopes even more than ours overall. The bowler from this end reminds me of Urshan from once from Barrow, he's got that same sort of the uh, organization and the dynamics around the ground. Classic case of six people doing all the work and uh, you can almost identify their Charlesy, their Chris Fletcher, their, their Benners, their Sam, their Andy, they've all got their equivalents here. It's a, it's a ground without an, uh, an alcohol license so Council owned or has some connection with the local council who don't want to set up a, a pub. Just thought I'd throw that in. Oh, I heard something there. But I'm not sure. I think it is. Almost a flicker of foot movement from Crocky there. Not, not that, but, uh, convincing. hasn't so much taken pace off as just taken pace out of the equation completely. Barely gets it down the other end. The hard work can get in the way of the square. Yeah, right, a bit more porridge on that one. Rocky takes the single. Again, 
Charles is wandering around the ground with the largest bag of wine gums I've ever seen. Unusual for Charlesy to be dishing out sweeties. Ben is taking on plenty of fluid. He's next in, he's got his pads on. Chris Charles also padded up. And then the, uh, the heavy artillery will be in. Charlie Fletcher sort of lurking to catch uh, somebody's eye. See if watch that inch. They can be unleashed. Right, off we go. Right for runs. Catch up in a circuit time. Up the old. Come on, lads.
Good evening. Thank you. 
Yeah, mate. Afternoon and welcome to Meagle.
chat around it was single and late back through the ball. Welcome back from Meagle. The idea was to walk right for runs, which the Orville Army on the march did exactly that. Uh, it seems to have produced wickets instead. Uh, two down, I think, last time we spoke. There's been a flurry of wickets, including uh, the run out of Andy Benyon, most unfortunate. He stormed over to the umpire to ostensibly to collect his cap. But uh, one senses that a, a word or two may have been exchanged there, who knows. Uh, anyway, moving on. Nice to hear from Colin and Sheila G. Nice to know that you're watching. Likewise, Simon, and probably Mike, wherever you are. Always good to have the G's on your side. Hornby and Fletcher, referred to by the scorer won Chris Fletcher today as the heavy artillery. So Rob, Rob Hornby, if you're watching, and Helen, you may, not, you want, you may want to look away now as uh, Joe pops one to what would have been a silly mid-off position, but luckily there's nobody there. Chris Bowler is taking pace off to, to a ridiculous extent, almost putting the ball down at the other end rather than bowling it, but uh, it's, it's remarkably effective. Seems to have tied us up for a while. 143 for six, I think it's 143 for six, but Andy Hill is standing fair and square in front of the school, book, school box at this stage, drinking his fourth pint of meagle water. Chris Charles is giving me the evil eye. I may get him on commentary soon. That will be a treat for everybody. Uh, possibly not Denise. Welcome, Denise. Glad to have you watching. Likewise, uh, Elaine Eccleston. I know you're uh, an avid follower of YouTube. Good to have your support, as always. Charlie Fletcher taking his time. Uh, Sarah, I'm not quite sure what you taught the lad here about d delay tactics, but he seems to be putting them into operation. Facing the bowler. Ooh. Bowling downhill. With the very slight br breeze that's now just beginning to get up here at Meagle. Much needed. It's a hot, heavy day.
Charlie played a most peculiar shot there. Dabbing and pulling out at the last minute. Here he comes again. But pitch and toed in his run up. Tries a shorter ball. And uh, that was designed to go over the pines, which line the for Charlie the leg side of the field. Looking out over a lovely field of barley across the meadows, down towards the, the basin of the River Tay. Quite superb setting here. Ah, Charlie's got a hold of that one. It's going to plug just beyond uh, backward point. Hornby brings Hornby on strike. <coughs> Got a feeling they should push the old fielder out for this uh, for this delivery. Let's see whether Joe has developed any sense of patience here, or whether he's just going to tee off. Who knows? the wicket. Uh, Joe puts one big dog down the track and pokes at it. No result. The troops are on the march behind me here. Alex Reed, very honest about his LBW, thinks he was probably plum. Charles, Gordon Bold, one of those stinging, cracking chazzers, straight drives, straight back to the bowler. There have been a few unfortunate dismissals, but uh, here we are on 144 for 6, 30 overs, gone, 10 to bat, good platform. Shouts of keep working, Joe. End of the over. <clears throat> Both umpires are, are well respected and well rated, apparently, uh, in the in the Scottish setup, the Scottish leagues. Uh, I think at least one of them has done a Scotland international game. So he almost almost disappears when he stands sideways. He's an absolute sliver of a man. Scribbling away in his notebook. And uh, the paparazzi are on the prowl here. So at some stage you'll be given wholly inaccurate footage from Steve Charles. who are playing beautifully as he has done all season, Steve. And then uh, one just held up on him and leading edge chipped it up to mid-off and he was off. Crocky laid the foundation just, just short of his 50, including a beautiful Hoyt pull six, which is what Charlie was attempting there. It's just a three iron chip shot in the end. I was talking earlier today to one of Albany's most interesting traveling fans. Lad called Gary, who has played cricket for England in the visually impaired side. In fact, that, that six of Charlie's has just cleared his head under the trees there. And uh, I, I was recalling with Gary the occasion when he was up at Folkestone and Flixton near Scarborough with us last year. And Charlie pulled off a very similar shot, which sailed over our head in the pavilion. And this guy, Gary, who's effectively got about 1% sight in one eye but follows cricket from the sound, from the noise uh, with stunning accuracy of, of both observation and, and recall and as this ball f sailed over our heads as that one is sailing now as Charlie's re repeating the, the trick here as that ball sailed over our heads and down towards Scarborough Gary said, that's the biggest six I have ever heard, purely from the sound of Charlie's bat. And uh, Charlie's bat's beginning to ping again today. 
And that's pushed the score on to 155 for six. With uh, the heavy artillery at the crease, that's gone up and somebody's under it. Two people were under it, neither of them successful. Heart in the mouth time for a moment there for young Mr. Fletcher. But um, some degree of confusion and recrimination in the field there. Two fielders both gesticulating at each other, obviously busy blaming the one and the other. In comes old Slowpoke here. Oh, the most innocuous looking delivery, which barely got up off the pitch. But is obviously hard to contend with. Can't help feeling that, that Charlie's reined himself back a little bit there. He and Joe Hornby con confer mid pitch. Uh, the crowd are building up nicely. You can't probably see it on, on, on this feed. They come through the, the Victory Park Arch, which is a war memorial in its own right, very tastefully done and decorated with names of the, of, of the dead and departed. Uh, behind me, as the, the breeze gets up, one of the canopies is taken off. Andy Benyon is quick to, to lend a helping hand. Restored the situation behind me there. In comes old Krabby the bowler, and that one is smashed to his brother, I think, fielding it at uh, mid-off. No run. And he's done the job there. And he's running down the... The wicket with that slightly cramped style of his, but that was spot on the money. You miss, I hit, and Charlie has missed. So yeah, there's a, a good crowd building up. As I say, they come through the, the, the Victory Arch, the Memorial Gates, uh, turn hard left, and there's a long swathe of council-maintained property with... Uh, Gorgeous copper beech trees and mixture of foliage behind, providing deep, deep shade. Cars park in the shade. Out come the picnic baskets, lots of little benches and um, trestle tables around the ground. Meagle have put a real effort into, into staging this last 16 clash and uh, clearly take their responsibility as, as Scottish flag holders very seriously. Lovely group of people who've welcomed us and look set to sort of feed and fate us as the as the day goes on. Twelfth man, you can probably see him running out and carrying an entire selection of, of, of drinks. Reminds us inescapably of Angus Young. Got the same sort of barnet and uh, a young lad at 16 doing twelfth man duties. Twelfth man for uh, Albany today is Dave Bergstrand, who is well, well beyond 16 and counting. I can't quite spot Burgers anywhere, but he's probably in the shade, in case he's called upon. Jimmy Eccleston facing. That is one of the stranger deliveries that you'll see uh, on YouTube, or indeed anywhere else. It's the sort of delivery that will probably feature in... It's Only Village, or That's So Village, one of the sites beloved of Simon G. And uh, even now I suspect it's trending because it popped up out of the bowler's hand and flipped off to mid-off behind him. This next delivery is considerably more vicious. Jimmy clamps down on it. Tall lad, Jimmy Eccleston. Very relaxed demeanour between deliveries, leans on his back. Dabs down on that one, there's no run. Umpire is indicating something or other, it's, he's got a collection of hand signals, none of which 
are familiar to me from the MCC handbook. Maybe, maybe that's the Meagle MCC that he's using, the semaphore code. He's got to get out of the way of that one. Jimmy takes the single. Gives Hornby the strike. Or Hornaby, as I think uh, Jimmy is inclined to call, call Joe Hornby. That one's beaten Hornby. Very little significant foot movement in the sh in the stroke, and it goes harmlessly, thank goodness, past the outside edge of his bat. He and uh, Jimmy exchanging notes in the middle of the pitch. The Albany senior statesman, Crocky Rowlands, Andy Benyon, beginning to do their lap now, plotting Meagles. Downfall, no doubt. Talking each other through some of the moments that have got us to this point, where we are 158 for seven. Uh, 33 overs gone, according to the scoreboard. Seven left. Uh, we're in the same sort of territory that we were at Lords just under a year ago. They brought on the left arm slinger from the top end, and he's gone for four. Benyon fields, neat little underarm flick. Yeah, this uh, Meagle Bowler, I can't give you a name, I'm afraid he's probably got a name on your screen if you're following with YouTube in front of you. Uh, apparently has a brother of identical size, shape, build, and bowling action, which is difficult to describe if you can't see it, but uh, it's sort of slingshot. Left arm loads up and flings it from a very short, stuttering little run-up. Quite effective. Keeps low, skids through, apparently gets a little bit of awkward movement. Umbrellas, parasols, marquees, all popping up around the ground. The Orvenly flag, newly uh, embellished by Elaine Eccleston with the, the Scottish flag. Thank you, Elaine. Now carries the flag badges of about eight, maybe nine different nations, including Scotland. Kept low, and I think the return has resulted in a run out. Most unfortunate. You can see that on screen now. The wee Willie the umpire is singled out from his position, and I think out it probably was. Bit of a mix up, strangled appeal, batsman turning and flinging himself try and make his ground but Joe Hornby has to trudge off dust himself down come back as a bowler and into the, the crease now strides Sam Mallows the new batsman is Mallows Kate will be watching I'm no doubt edge of her seat Offering all kinds of advice to Sam, some of which affects his batting, some of which probably doesn't. But uh, he's a sturdy fellow, Sam Mallows. He's broad shouldered and broad beamed, even. Uh, he certainly give the ball a good smack if he finds it in his, in his arc. And he 
Mickey and Jimmy mid-pitch conference, sharing a bit of wit and wisdom, no doubt. 165 for 8 of 33. Tumulty still in the hutch, sensibly out of the sun, which is beating down now. Sam Hill is in the direct rays of, of the sunlight, soaking them up. Dispensing medicines, bandages, water, all the normal tricks of her trade. Thank you, Sam Hill. So back to the Sam in the middle, Sam the Mallow. Sam Mallow's facing left arm slinger. Really must be quite awkward to pick up the trajectory of his arm. Certainly not orthodox. End of the over. Slightly disappointed looking Charlie Fletcher coming towards me. Any thoughts, Charlie? Uh, a lot, no bounce, well, varied bounce. Yeah, difficult track to, 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 to get going on. I thought you, yeah, you hung not, in there. It's not easy. No, it's not easy. No. Just as you were unleashing. That, that spin is, is shit, but it's just, it's the bounce and it is turning a lot now. This guy, this guy's quite handy. It's a very heavy ball. Yeah, apologies for any language you're hearing on the air here, but it, it comes live and direct from Beagle. <laughs> I'm just interviewing Charlie Fletcher here. Given us one or two exciting moments with the bat, as he tends to do. Do you reckon the pitch is, is, is a difficult one to get yeah. the hang of? Yeah, I think if you get to 180, I think that'll be a good score. Oh. Yeah. We've got to go try and pat the overs first of all. No, it'll suit the spinners. It, it is looking like a pace off, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Mind you, Alf, Alf feels nowhere near as quick as it first looked. That's interesting, you know. Because you'd think that the slope would carry it down. Mm. Uh, rapidly, but it, it, it's held up on a number of occasions. You had one which plugged completely, yeah. just over a long arm. I'd rather unkindly describe this bowler as having a crabby action. Yeah, it's a very, it's it's a very heavy ball, ball. It, uh, Yes, I, it, it kind of comes off the off the pitch quicker than you expect it to. So. Yeah, and, and not swinging it though. No, no, I don't think anybody has. Uh, it's doing honest. a little bit off the pitch. It's not swinging. There's no atmosphere around to, to, to move this. Thing. But my sympathy is with any bowler who comes down this kind of ramp and has to negotiate a, a good watch. It's, re it's really weird when you're batting to Six. watch it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. To watch him coming down the slope. Interesting. Jimmy, Jimmy's batting sensibly, you know. He's, he's got that ability just to dig in and keep it ticking over. Sam will launch at some stage, <laughs> is, is my yeah. sense of him as a batter. Yeah. He's, he's not going to hang around and die one day. But they've got time, they've got time to bat. Five overs after this. It's, su it's such a gorgeous day, there's absolutely no question of good weather interfering. Hey, mind how you go behind the bowler's arm there. This is, I'm not sure the Sam would notice necessarily, but that's a very educated shot all along the ground. Well played, Mr. Mallows. Your lad, uh, whom you were coaching in the nets the other day, will, will be proud of that shot. Well played, Dad. Jimmy Eccleston now. Bat raised. Ooh, bat down very quickly on that one. He really had to close the gate sharply there. And uh, managed to do so. They've got a burger and... Um, <clears throat> Uh, hot dog stand up and running. Uh, not exactly cheeseburger, but it's good enough, I would say. Looking tasty. Thanks to Graham Cheesebro for ball sponsorship, I noticed uh, last week. Thank you, Graham. Juby. Good neighbours to have for the cricket club. Somebody uh, around the ground here said, Oh, Alvin, you're the 
that's the club with the huge net. So it's nice to be famous for one or two things. Uh, thank you, Graham and Julie, for your support. I hope you're watching. Possibly with Harry, who may well be involved in slightly more exciting video entertainment. Here comes the slinger. Oh, way down the leg side. The umpire's been very consistent and and rightly, I think, tough on the, the leg side wide. Uh, so we, we can expect exactly the same thing and make sure we don't give up as many extras as Meagle have done, or indeed as many extras as we did at Lord's last year, cost us. This is such an awkward bounce and angle of delivery to deal with. Mallows is looking unperturbed as he tends to at the wicket. The upright stance. Oh, he, he eases that ball through the covers, ambles through for a single. Get the sense that not much disturbs Sam when he's at the wicket. Very much a bowler's batsman. Jimmy versus the slinger. Oh, Jimmy wins that one. Caresses it. Down to mid-off, thinking about the second. Sensibly says no. Eagle fielding, the ground fielding has been sharp. They've effected uh, two run-outs now. Uh, a number of direct hits to the stumps in between, so they're, they're not, a, not a side to be messed with, I would have thought, uh, in the field. Possibly a run there, but no, cut off. Interesting to see whether Mallows decides to steal the strike on, on Jimmy here. I don't think they're competitive with each other as batsmen, but they're just trying to work us towards 190, 200 would be nice, 170 for eight at the moment. Another 30 runs in the last four overs would do us well. Oh. Climbed into that one. Good shot, Sam. Had a very strong, definite sound to it, that drive. Not a noisy side, Meagle. They've, they've been attentive, but not terribly... Oh, that's a dreadful delivery. What he thought he was doing with that one. Uh, not... Not all that noisy in the field, but it's a hot day, and there's at least two, maybe three drinks breaks that have now been taken. Albany will have to do the same thing, make sure that he and Charles has set up water stations around the ground. I haven't, uh, I haven't really spoken to Ian about the condition of their wicket. You, you get the feeling that he was reserving judgment until he'd seen how it played. But the bowler's footholds and the batsman's markups around the crease are quite loose, uh, suggesting that the wicket might break up a little bit more. Sam kicks it around. You can see dust coming up under his boot there. Taking his time, Mr. Mallows. Not going to be rushed this stage of the game and they very seems to be pushed a man out onto the uh, long on boundary which is I suspect where this one may be directed no it isn't forward defensive down the wicket very correct just see traffic on the main road to Dundee, I think, in the background there. Can't hear it. It's a long way away. It's visible across the fields. I think the ball is going to make it there. It's going towards a knot of Albany supporters who cheer. So clearly it's crossed the, uh, the white line there. Uh, yeah, we were driven here today by a combination of Andy Benyon in a transit van and 
Andy Hill in a 17-seater minibus, Mercedes-Benz vehicle, capped at 62 miles an hour on the on the motorway, which Andy certainly pushed the, the limit all the way. Absolutely superb display of long-distance driving. Uh, navigation by Sam Nav, and he comes. As a, Awkward bowler, we've discovered that now to our cost. Manages to navigate, negotiate this real hump in the ground at this end. Which is going to give bowlers and wicket keepers and slip cordon a little bit of a conundrum, I think, to work out where to stand when it comes to our turn in the field. Mallows, watchful, Ooh, takes, wears one on the, the pad, must have been going down leg, no appeal. Maybe he got a bit of a thick edge there. Once again, the umpire gives us a sort of medley of signals from his collection of, of private, unorthodox semaphore that he seems to use. I'm not sure who he's communicating with. And you'll probably hear the, in the microphone the wind getting up a little bit now. And uh, it's much needed. It just takes a little bit of an edge off this very warm day. So almost a wide, I would have thought. The Eagle Keeper has been tidy in, in, in the main. Um, looks like a stopper rather than a stumper to me, but I may, as always, be proved horribly wrong. And he comes down the hill, up and away, and that one probably had Sam in two minds, and he's, he's starting to run. Good awareness, good thinking. Uh, he, he dug it out, bowler flicked it behind him back onto the stumps, broke the stumps, the batsman crossed for a single. Sam Hill has now retreated to the shade of one of the uh, pagodas that's been set up. That's the same one that blew over minutes ago. So, Oh, she's taken the precaution of anchoring it very firmly. Thank you, Sam. We can see the Meagle Cricket Club banner flapping in this increasing breeze. Club founded in 1876. Uh, just, what, eight years before Albany, so fair dues. Been around a while. It's provided some useful cricketers, we, we gather, played for Scotland. Nobody in the current 11, but uh, names like Drummond. May be familiar to anybody who has followed Scottish cricket over the years. Product of this parish where we we are reliably informed. Gordon Drummond. And uh, yes, I'm told Annette Drummond has played uh, cricket for Scotland, the Scottish women's international side. I'm not quite sure how long and, and, and how often. Somebody online will look that up for us and let us know. Annette and Drummond and Abby Drummond, uh, both Scottish women's internationals. Sophie Eccleston will be able to tell us a lot more about them, I suspect. Probably got them both out in her time. Thanks for your tweet, Sophie. Good to know that you're keeping an eye on the Albany lads. You know how much they appreciate playing with you and, and your support when you're not playing. Cheers, Sophie Austin. Good luck in your next match. I can't remember who you're playing. Some strange side or other. Oops, there goes a bit of a tangle. Mallow's displaying his football skills. I'll probably glean this information from somewhere. I'm not quite sure which team Sam supports in the football world. Uh, I dare not get it wrong, so I won't even speculate. But uh, he's looked a solid presence at the crease. Sam, he's not going to let us down, I don't think. There's another single. 
or possibly two. And if these two are quick, they'll get a third, because I think there's one for the throw there, but they've decided that, uh, no, under the circumstances, they'll set it for two. It is a hot day here at Meagle. End of the over. Scorer Chris Fletcher. I think that Chris is using a whole array of coloured pens which uh, Colin Jones has bequeathed to him. So it's, uh, it's an impressive looking scorecard that Chris Fletcher is compiling for us, going back to his original early days as a schoolboy scorer for Albany before he became wicketkeeper, captain, chairman, president of the club. Distinguished career with ACC. Young Chris Fletcher. Uh, 178 for 8 is what he's posted there. Of 38 overs, 2 overs left. 12 balls. And a change of bowling at this end. Somebody else is going to have to clamber up and down the slope. He's decided to start his run from the sort of the crown of the of the hill from where he can see everybody else and then run down towards Jimmy Eccleston who looks sort of supremely indifferent as to what's coming next uh, doesn't really look very much as if he's too concerned about the change of bowling Jimmy will just apply his method there it is it's gone what a pity that's another court and bowl dismissal uh, it must be said, a fairly soft one. Uh, Jimmy knows that, he won't be happy. But uh, one thing we do know about Jimmy is that he'll come back and give it his all. His inner dog will be unleashed when he bowls. Unlucky Jimmy Eccleston. Leaving us now with 11 balls. And the, uh, the moment that Albany supporters hold their breath for, Ben Tumulty is coming in to bat. I know this always excites you, Richard Wright. This is why you pay your subscription. Tumulty in to bat. Superb effort yesterday, Tumulty and indeed Davy Pearson, to try and fend off the last couple of overs against Timperley, which would have secured a draw. Uh, ben took a deep right to the last over and unfortunately succumbed, caught in a six or seven man slip cordon which Timpley had set up for him with I think just two balls to what would have been a glorious rear guard action anyway those of us lucky enough to, to watch at Timpley yesterday could, could see what a, a a good technician Tumulty can be as a batsman when he allows himself to really focus and concentrate as I'm sure he will do now Good basic defensive technique. He takes guard now. I think he's asking for two leg. Uh, umpire is giving him one of his uh, signature, slightly idiosyncratic hand signals, which means two leg, I think, or two something. And Tumulty takes his time, looks around the field, settles into his stance. Nice wide, open stance. Bat swishing around and misses that's uh, a bit of a, a blip there for Tumulty I thought he was going to come in and just tap it around he may have been told to give it some stick 178 for 9 200 is looking a little bit elusive now but who knows there we are that's, that's your job Ben, give, give Mallows the strike and then I think the long handle will come out. I like to think so. Apologies to any non ordinary listeners, viewers, watchers, followers. This commentary will continue to be as one-eyed as I can make it. Mallows. There he goes. Ooh. Digs it out. Must have uh, just dipped on him slightly. Bowler's been called Froggy by his teammates. I assume that refers to some characteristic or other of his. Possibly part of one of his hobbies. Who knows? 
In comes Froggy, running down the hill. Mallows, Froggy to Mallows. Mallows pushes him out in a cloud of dust and trots through for a single. The, uh, the wicket is drying under, under a baking sun today. Really interesting to see what, what it does when people like uh, the Charles boys get involved with the ball in hand. Here comes Froggy. Oh, strange. Half pulled out of his action and dished up a full toss, which Tumulty treated with, I think, possibly undue respect. Anyway, Tumulty and Mallows conferring before the last over in this last 16 clash between Meagle and Orvalny to see who goes through to the last eight in the Village Cup. Next up, uh, we believe, will be Rainford, just outside Wigan, awaiting the winners of today's clash. One more over, we'll stay with you on air, and then go get yourself something cool or delicious, and we'll see you back at the start of the, the Meagle innings. 180 for nine. Uh, a defendable target, I think most would agree around the ground, but not an unreachable one. So, game on seems to be the, the way to capture the outcome of this first inning. In comes the slinger for his last over. That now gives Sam five balls, and I suspect he's eyeing up the nearby field. Orbally will now, I think, bat out their overs. We're in the last over of the game. I'm joined by Paul Eccleston, and much as predicted, Sam has eyed up the field, but it's dropped short of long on. What do you make of, uh, of where we stand here, Paul? I think 180 is the psychologically a good score. Uh, the pitch is uh, very slow, and it's just popping up, so uh, three ball in the right areas. We should be in business. Yeah, I thought that one popped on Jimmy, didn't it? Uh, yeah, on your James. him and Chris Charles. And Chris, yeah. And Steve Charles earlier, if you, mm. if you remember, his first dismissal. Leading edge. In comes the slinger. Oh, that's a wide outside off stump. And uh, Timothy misses out on what would have been a cracking drive. We're in the last over. The Albany forces are gathering in the shade. And Tumulty has smitten it down the ground. Absolutely cracking straight drive. Unfurling one of his really signature strokes, giving the, the strike to Mallows. Thanks, Paul Eck, for your uh, brief summary. Spot on, as always. And he slings down his all but final ball. Batsman cross for a single. And I think we may be one or possibly two deliveries short of Orvenley wrapping up their innings at 183 for nine. Contributions down the order, but nobody really going on to uh, a commanding score. Captain Rowlands leading the way with a patient 40, but one that was peppered with uh, six and several straight driven fours and Tumulty has brought out the scoop uh, he's missed it completely but no matter four buys are signalled the scoop was enough to confound the, the keeper and the last ball of all these innings has uh, seen Tumulty not out Mellows not out both uh, leaving the pitch and beginning to think like bowlers, which is essentially what both of them are. But boy, they've done us proud here, as, as has everybody on this occasion. Orville now defending 187. We'll take a break. See you at the beginning of the Meagle innings.
हो गया चाचू जी दुबारा यार चाचे नहीं दुबारा
coming off, great. Right? Do what's happening, boy. Where have you been?
what I mean? Yeah. Oh, he's... Oh, you're doing... I've done half each of you? Yeah. Let me just check he's okay. Hey. Okay. Oh, you can't go that way. What? Left for oh. wickets, innit? I've done better, lad. Can't afford that. You're allowed to play, don't you? Come on, buddy! Come on! Here we are back in business at Meagle. <coughs> Chris Charles measuring out his run. Uh, Chaz has decided to, to, to bowl at the, the flat end of the ground rather than to have to navigate and negotiate the, uh, the ramp end of the ground closest to the camera here. Which I think we'll probably go to Jimmy Eccleston who <coughs> has been known to shorten his run to suit the circumstances. But uh, Chris Charles, I think he's going to show these folks here a little bit of extra pace, perhaps that they haven't encountered on this wicket for a while. Uh, he's right yeah, spot on the money, first ball. The uh, Meagle openers have both got the reputation for being dashes. They, they have a go, we, we're told, early on. So the contest is well set up here. 187 the target. And uh, plenty of Good rattle in the field from all in the right from the off. <laughs> mm. And there we go. A, uh, a high wide and handsome slash and crash approach. From the opener, who's decided to set off rapidly in pursuit of 187. Chris Charles will not be impressed with that, nor that. So you've got a bit of thinking to do, Chris. Hit for uh, eight or three balls. Just to come back now with his trademark back of a length stuff, just get get him batsman half forward, half back, and and, and and push it through to keeper Alex Reed, who's had to shorten his distance behind the stumps in order to not get caught out by the slope. I think it's helped by the fact it's a left-handed opening batsman. Chris decided to stick to a full length and attack the stumps. We've been given a very good lunch here by the Meagle hosts who really are splendid, the hospitable and a friendly, cricket-loving, family sort of orientated club. Lovely people to, to meet up with and share their, their ground and a, and a game of cricket. Jazz, all close to the chest. That's his delivery. Clears the stumps. It's coming down just to my right. Clatters into the side screen. Unfortunately, it's given up four buys, which makes this a very expensive opening over. But uh, Chris has found his length. Ben Tumulty doing the fielding. Strutting around the pitch as if he earns it. Him off. He's got that extra bit of bounce. Uh, sure enough, an expensive over, but a very profitable one for the ACC. Oh, bold Chaz.
Alex Reed, you may have heard him there on the uh, stump mic. Well, not exactly the stump mic, more the frog box mic, but close enough as he picked up his reserve helmet to uh, cover his thinning locks. Uh, Alex Reed, well pleased with that last delivery. Saw him in the pouch, a very safe catch. So, first over, 12 for one in pursuit of 187. The word around the ground is that that's one of the uh, Amigo Danger Men that we've disposed of. Uh, a couple more to come. The new batsman looks solid, compact, right handed. Moved by Skipper Rhodes to bring Steve Charles on to open the, the bowling. Uh, lots of good reasons for that, I think. Uh, here's one of them. Very confident. Real. The uh, Steve Charles first over wicket syndrome almost kicking in there. Whatever the technical word for that is. But um, Steve not only has that short run up which allows him to avoid the hump, but also it's looked all the way through like a pace off wicket, one that takes a bit of turn and maybe holds up a little bit at the same time. So ideally suited to Steve Charles' style of bowling. Fix the ball now with the hand to hand and then one, two, whips it in. It's a little bit short. All this indecision there amongst the Batters, but uh, back home safely. <clears throat> Umpires haven't switched ends. We've still got Wee Willie down this end, who's bouncing around like a little bantam cock of an umpire that he obviously is. Highly efficient, critical umpire. But, uh, lots of signature moves, most of which I think you're probably seeing for yourself on the YouTube channel. Thanks to Meagle for broadcasting the event. Steve Charles ties him up with a nice tight opening over. I'm going to try and get some live pitch side interviews here where I can. See who I can nab from uh, home or away side. Crowd building nicely. Obviously, big Sunday afternoon entertainment here in, uh, in Meagle, as it should be. Other attractions are available, I believe, something happening down in Wimbledon. We've got uh, listeners and watchers hailing in from all, ar all around the world, in fact. My brother Andrew in Salzburg watching the uh, Austrian Grand Prix. Um, I guess they're of Red Bull. High caffeine energy drinks are available, but uh, they haven't been invited to, to, uh, to watch the Austrian Grand Prix. His base in Cape Town, South Africa. He tells me in his tweet that he'd rather be up here in Scotland, watching all of them play cricket. The National Village Cup knockout. Sponsored by Vernius, the rural broadband suppliers. Thank you, Vernius. Chris Charles. Another full stroke induced there by the slight the extra yard of pace that Chris provides. Injects into any innings. Turns, walks back to his mark with that measured tread of his. Pretty organised bowler, Chris. Has a method, has a rhythm, sticks to it, works with it. Here he comes again. 
A little bit of extra bounce there, just like the ball which did for the opener earlier on in his first over. It's been a more economical over this one. And uh, yeah, you're watching an all Charles attack from both ends. Something we've seen before. And uh, always lifts all his spirits to have these two boys leading the charge. Here comes Chris. Bang! And he's really dug that one in. A lovely little bit of lift and away drift at the same time. That's been looking distinctly uncomfortable. You can probably hear Ben Tumulty chirping away from fine leg. Lee Ainsworth in at uh, second slip these days. Promotion for Lee, I suppose you could say. Chris Charles. And there it is again, just that awkward length pushing him forward this time or drawing him forward. And uh, he's found his rhythm now, Chris. Barely a cloud in the sky, one or two vapor trails I said, from Dundee Airport, I assume, just over the hill. Here comes Chris. That one's fended off. The field is swarming in. There's a, there's a good, healthy buzz about the Albany fielding effort at the moment. Orchestrated by keeper Alex Reed. Crocky looking reasonably content. Annie Penyon making lots of noise. Pushed himself out to. Uh, he's back, sorry, he's back in first step. Position that he's made his own. Rehearsing his moves to the left, his moves to the right, and his moves down the middle. Left hander facing Steve. We've got uh, viewers and listeners around the country. Just had a message in from Seaford and uh, down on the Sussex coast near Hove, Brighton. Steve and Leslie Drew wrapped in attention to the, uh, the game up here in Scotland. Both loyal followers of, of Albany join us in Lords last year, hoping to do the same again this year. Who knows? We'll keep you posted. Nobody keen to get to Lords and Steve Charles operating off short economical run. Just whirling and twirling it in there. It's, uh, it's everybody, starting with the umpire, know what, uh, what he thinks of each of the rooms. Shane Warne like his attention to dramatic detail. There he goes. Uh, it's, it's been a good move, bringing him on to open the innings. He's, he's bottled up an end for two overs. Takes his cap with a sort of exasperated dash of the hand. Hungry for wickets, Steve Charles always is. Sort of bowler feels he should have one per over and sometimes does. See twelfth man Bergstrand uh, relaxing there in the in the shade of the, the pagoda. Always a good man to have on standby. In the case of a, an injury or a discomfort to, to one of our players. Done the job for a good number of years now, Burgers. Ideally suited to 12th, 12th man duties. This is trapped in there. Back pad. Stifled, rather half hearted appeal, maybe going down leg. Didn't hear any bat involved.
Tumulty is playing keepy uppy with a, with a water bottle, which has its moments. Perhaps not his number one skill set. Here we go. Come on, Chaz. Oh, he's, he's, oh, he's banged it in there, and I've caught him glancing below the forearm, perhaps. Chess. That's been doing the time-honored thing of not, uh, not showing any pain on Patting the pitch up about a yard and a half from where the ball actually landed, but yeah, meaningful gesture all the same. Well done. Field closes in. Oh, that was out. Uh, you've probably seen that by now on screen. I'm not sure whether. YouTube extends to replays, but uh, it'd be interested to hear your view on that one. Uh, my entirely biased take is that it was umpire's call, and we'll, we'll give that one to the umpire. Keeper Reed standing up. All, all but standing up. And that's another one that stuns the batsman. Seemed to cut back in on him a little bit. He managed to keep it out and keep it off his stumps and sort of retain his composure, but uh, get the feeling he's not entirely comfortable facing Chris Charles. Who would be? Appeals are coming thick and fast. Make the third one count, the second one in this over. Just get the feeling that uh, the pressure is building. <laughs> Even from this distance, I can hear a Lee Ainsworth cackle of, uh, I'm not sure whether it's delight or derision, but uh, either way, Lee's enjoying himself out there. Head flung back in obvious mirth and merriment. What a lad. Here comes Chris Charles. Oh, once again, that ball gets uncomfortably close to the stumps. It's been a torrid over for the batsman. He survived. Score moves on to... Well, it doesn't really move on at all. It stays at 12 for one. Five overs. Target there, steady at 187. And uh, both batsmen yet to open their account. Scorer Chris Fletcher, President Fletcher, is uh, assiduously marking away in multicolored very similitude. He's got all the pens out there, thanks to Colin Jones for a temporary loan of your pen set. Being put to good use by uh, Chris Fletcher. Steve Charles. Oh, that's a delicate little nibble. And the throw comes in, and the finger is up. We're trying to see who to congratulate there. He's been enveloped by a whole mob throng of Orphanley players who, who've produced between them that moment of magic. The direct hit run out. I thought it was a bold decision to go there, and uh, uh, but only the direct hit would have done it, and it has done. Those of you perhaps watching more carefully back at home can tell me who it was. Uh... Anyway, whoever it is, he'll be very, very pleased with his work. Umpire repairing the wreckage of the stumps. Uh, he seems to be eyeing it up from about three different angles. Yep, he's, he's happy, he's repaired it. So, I think that was Charlie Fletcher, was it, who, who, who swooped there? Uh, I think I got my details wrong with Charlie earlier on this afternoon, but... That looked like Charlie certainly had his kind of signature sweep and swish about it. Well played. Well played, Orvany. 12 for 2. Uh, Orvany suffered two, two run outs themselves. Different variety of run out, but that sort of redresses the balance ever so slightly. Nothing like a direct hit run out to lift the, the fielding side. 
prams and dogs and uh, oh, a sort of um, recumbent bicycle being wheeled and rolled around the field. It's quite a spectacle here at Meagle. Local community turned out in, 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 in good numbers to support their side. Chris Charles coming uh, right arm over now to the right-hander. Sorry, Steve Charles. Steve Charles from the, the hump end. I think I can see Sam Mallows warming up as well, so that's, he'll be in the action soon. Lassman smothers that one. Intriguing. Steve, Steve Vern with uh, all due respect. Steve Bowling in his shades. You'd be glad to hear Bobby. He's got his uh, Nicky Rowe. He, he, he's got his um, he's got his shades on. Probably much as you told him. Well done, well done, Steve. That's been taking his time to mark his guard. Apparently, you've got to remark your guard almost every ball because the the dust and the Scuffing and scraping around the the crease is quite uh, significant. Pitch is drying almost visibly. Right behind that one, Steve very happy to build the pressure, join the dots. A bit of extra finger spin on that, I think. Used to be a seam bowler, Steve Charles, once in his day, opened the bowling for Albany, bowling off a kind of Proctor-esque, wrong-footed approach. Big, booming in-duckers. Then saw the wisdom, uh, or the folly of his ways, rather, and opted for one, two, three-step spinning. Been a great change. Brought him a hat-trick in last year's... Uh, Bonius Village Cup semi-final down in Nayland. Another lovely day out for, for Albany. Another very hospitable club. Wish them well this year, wherever they are in the, the Welsh uh, Championship. Always strong contenders there. As are Meagle up here in Scotland. Nice international flavour to the competition. Chris Charles, bouncer. It's balloon! And there's no question in the... Ainsworth's mind that that came off a glove, but the umpire differs. And there's a subdued reaction in the field, which suggests it was probably four, four on. From here, it looked like glove. From the initial reaction, I thought glove. But um, everybody else is unmoved. Still, nice to know that Chris can bend his back and make it, uh, make it count. That's your boy, Denise, doing the job there. Another little snorter. Boys, this is Aimed up at the ribs. Properly fended away by the batsman. Risk business been done over the barbecue tent. Burgers and uh, sort of patty like arrangement going into a bun there. Ooh, Chris brings that one back off a very awkward length. Seems to be getting movement both, well, more off the pitch than in the air. Not a great uh, swinger of the ball, Chris, but boy, when it uh, cuts and seams, he's a handful. Those of you who followed us all the way to Laws last year will remember ball that he bowled up the slope to get rid of uh, Johnson, I think it was, of Calmore. Held its line along the Lord's slope and cleaned him up. Superb moment for, for Chris, the home of cricket. There's a contingent of uh, legal supporters who've now set off to do their own circuit of the ground. Two, three dogs following them around. Yeah, 
wind sort of billowing out the, uh, the long tresses of some of the ladies there and one of the lads has decided to take a football with him for no apparent reason but uh, it's a day out they're uh, entered into the, the, the spirit of this the premier village cup event in the world Chris bangs it in. He's really recovered after that um, first expensive open. Has been uh, meager with meager. Uh, I've been struggling with the pronunciation all afternoon, but I think I've just about got it right now. Meagle, an ancient Pictish word, we're told, meaning swamp or bog. But there's no sign of either. Just a glorious. Newly mowed, freshly mowed greenfield. Club with a proud history. Steve Charles, one, two, and he's decided to go bang bang. That's when it heaved that through car corner. No fielder there. Closest fielder is actually scorer Chris Fletcher and groundsman Ian Charles. So somebody else has grabbed the pens and doing the job there. We'll, uh, we'll send a runner in a moment to go and find out who it is. Oh, I think it could be Paul Eccleston. Scoring left-handed. Man of many talents. Steve Charles. He sort of fends that away. Not too comfortable, not too convincing. Nothing more to report. Yes, that's correct. I'll try and get a pitch side interview in a moment with uh, Chris Fletcher. Always trenchant in his views on, well, all things really, but cricket in particular. Uh, Alvinly specifically. I'll try and get a word out of Ian Charles. Not easy, but um, we'll have a go. Ian watching both his lads here open the bowling for Albany at both ends. Immensely proud father, family, groundsman, coach. A man has given all to the club over many, many years. Steve. Another little prod in the poke. Yeah, the Meagle batsman not displaying a great deal of confidence in their own track here. Obviously a tricky one to put bat through ball. Tossed up by Steve. Ooh. Might almost think about having a man under the lid close in even if it's just to, to chirp and add to the pressure which is mounting now on the Meikle batsman. Uh, we've got 17 for 2 of 8 so the scoring rate has begun to crawl a little. Yeah, I've got uh, opportunity for an exclusive interview here with uh, President Chris Fletcher. Chris, what, <laughs> characteristic chuckle. What do you make of the uh, of, of the game at this point? It's very difficult to judge. I thought um, the way I was really started there, I means I thought we were going to be setting 220, 2.40. But it appears that uh, the pitch is too dry. And scoring runs is very difficult. Um, another couple of wickets would be very, very special. Yeah, that was almost one of them there with a, He's going nowhere there, with a sort of groping flash outside off stump. Yeah, Chris is starting to get more bounce than any of the leading paces did. Obviously, he's got that height hand. His arm comes over quicker, but Steve is actually looking the most threatening with the bowler. Absolutely, yeah. It, uh, ideal pitch surface for him yeah, and that's where we struggled against their three slower bowlers they, they were getting it to, to jag there was one to Benners hit him in the chest knocked his cap off golly They've up and over that's over so Joe Hornby's head I think Crocky it's Crocky I'm sorry oh, the sun had to confuse me for a moment yep yeah. so that's uh, a lot to pull Benners got Benners lost his cap did he yeah ricocheted off his good lord <laughs> top of his chest there's more danger to cap hitting the stumps than the ball. Oh, that 
would have been a moment. Uh, his run out was, I think it was out, well, but mate. it uh, provided a moment of drama, didn't it? Yeah, he didn't think he was out, but then again, no. most people don't. I, I think the confusing bit was he actually dropped his bat, but no. he dropped it after he was past the stumps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then he advanced on the umpire, and I thought, ooh, yeah, we're in for a moment here, but actually he was just going to retreat the, the cap, cap that we were talking about. Great yeah, response, Jumper! Yeah, been absolutely fine here. They've been very hospitable, very positive people. Um, yeah, and I think that's extremely warm weather. What, what is the temperature? Have you, have you done this? 20, it's 24. 24, really? Yeah. But we had a breeze at one stage, but it's very, very slight. Yeah, and most of the shade that was available in the ground under the trees to our left and in front of the pavilion, that's all gone completely now. Most of it's been monopolised by Sam Hill and Dave Bergstrand, who've taken up a fair amount of change between them. Absolutely. Yeah, Chris's first over was, was full of incident, wasn't it? I think it was 12 runs off, well, yeah. eight, eight of the bat and four byes and, and, and a wicket. Yeah, I think they, uh, they were all off the contact I think the third one that came down here was off the inside edge. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah the yeah. first two were just a bit too full, but we saw that lad warming up in the uh, in the nets before they started, yeah. having someone throw him full tosses so he could whack it. Uh, it's a slightly different reality out in the middle when you've got the quality bowler coming against you. Yeah, mate, good dinner! It's and like, uh, is that Jimmy going to ground in the in the covers there? Yeah. Jimmy pecks and throwing himself around. Nice little stop and pick up. I think we're close enough to the, to the mic here. Um, Chris, I'm just going to take a step, step closer to make sure. That Jimmy and <coughs> Colin G and others watching us back in, in Albany are uh, kept abreast of what's going on here. You'll, you'll like what you're seeing at this point, lads. End of the eighth, the ninth. ninth over. Sorry, yeah. you've given up the um, the scoring pens. I gather did, did, did Paul Eccleston manage to wrestle them from you? No, no, we had an agreement that we do half uh, each. Okay, it's quite an alien sensation using a pen for me these days. <laughs> <laughs> You're a screen-based man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But we got it to end up, so that was the main thing. <laughs> And had I had any tip I would have only needed it once. Oh, well done. Lorraine would be proud of you. It's been an honourable history and tradition of scorers for Albany, as with all amateur clubs, rely on people giving up the entire afternoon and, and focusing. It's the concentration required to score, which I find very tiring. And it was very difficult in there because we were in the pavilion and they were all preparing tables and stuff, ah. and there was an old boy in there reminiscing about bowling Sunday. That's a good shout for LB. Yeah, he's taking his time, but he's done it. Yeah, well done. Well done, Steve. Well done, the umpire, who's been very steady. And uh, a nice sustained appeal there. We weren't giving up on that one, were we? No, I think, as is often the case, as an umpire, you stand there and think, how is that not out? Yeah. What reason is there for me not to give it out? Um, that's good umpire, in my opinion. He's, I, I've talked to a few people around the ground. He's got a reputation for being a not-out umpire. Oh, OK. But a consistently not-out umpire, which, if you don't yeah. mind, if he's always going to be hard to convince, then I, we've convinced him on this occasion. I don't think the bowlers would necessarily agree with that <laughs> assessment, because, of course... They feel LBW is a very legitimate means of dismissal, but yeah, yeah. you only have to witness uh, Stuart Broad and the number of times he gets a review wrong. I, I just wouldn't let him make a decision. No. <laughs> he clearly doesn't know where he's bowling. Yeah, well, other fast bowlers are available. Mm -hmm. He looks disappointed coming out. He's shaking his head, but I mean, you, you, you seldom get a batsman who comes out and says, yep, that was absolutely part of you. Well, if the ball was where he thought it was, he would have hit it. So he's clearly misjudged it and it's hit him. So, yeah, that's what we have umpires for. Spoken like an umpire. Thank you, sir. Right, what have we got going on there? Drinks being rushed onto the field from time to time. Dave Bergstrand earning his, uh, his, his 12th man cap. Uh, running off his pie and beans. <laughs> <laughs> pie and beans? Was, how was lunch? I, I know it was provided it, on the house. Yes, it was, it was pie, uh, potatoes, the mixed vegetables or beans, which is rather extraordinary fare for the weather we're enjoying. I think earlier in the day there was sight or, or mention of a haggis pie, which uh, seemed to go down quite well. Oh right, I, I believe you found a haggis sandwich, did you? Did I did, you? I did indeed, just down the road at uh, the, the lovely little centre of, of Meagle. 
you manage to establish whether it was a vegetarian haggis or a uh, I didn't, a, sadly. A four legged no. haggis. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what goes into haggis, but I wouldn't like to ask too closely. <laughs> yeah. So here we are sitting on 22 for 3 off, uh, we're into the 10th over, and um, Ormany keeping a lid on things. That's, uh, once again, Steve's capable of bowling with a lot more pace than he's using today. He's, he's obviously interpreted it as another pace for quick. Yeah, absolutely. And I wouldn't be surprised for him to bowl at 8 on the bounce here. Yeah. And I think just because of the, the dip on the approach from this end, I would expect Sam Mallows to probably follow Chaz. Um, at the, f the flat the end. At the flat end, end. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Perhaps Benton will teach to replace Steve here. Yeah. Interesting to see where they use Jimmy Eccleston. That one's been lifted to Joe. To Joe, he's managed to pick that up out of the, 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 the gloom, which is now created by the, the pine tree barrier on the far side of the ground there. So he picked it up all right. Yeah, so you think that, that we'll, bow, we'll, bow, we'll bowl Stee out? I think so, yes, because what's Chris bowl? Chris has bowled five now, he's got yeah. eight in total. He might have one more, or they might bring Sam on, and it looks as if Sam is going yep. to mark his one off. He so, is, yes. he's, he's doing that very careful, almost sort of mincing set of, I think he told me it was 32. Uh, uh, tippy toes. Tippy toe, <laughs> foot lengths there. Big, the big boots, so. Um, Sam Mallows, but he's very exact about it. You don't often see bowlers doing that these days, do you? It's unusual, unusually accurate. Yeah. He's now making a complete mess of the, the ground. Mark is uh, start of his run-up, giving his cap to the umpire. He's good at making friends with umpires as well, Sam Mallows. You've got the feeling he's sort of almost got a metaphorical arm around your shoulder as an umpire. He's, he's a genial lad. And a landscape garden, so he can uh, come back and fix those footballs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the um, you'll be interested to hear this as um, president of Albany, the president of Meekle here, uh, Bill, mows the outfield himself. Yes, he, he came and, and uh, said hello Did earlier today. Yes. Another very thoroughgoing cricket man, I thought. Yes. Sam Mallows. One. Mm, well, let's bounce straight away for Sam. Swing as well. Yes. His swing tends to come from the hand and from the arm. It's not late swing, but you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to to pick all the same. I would have thought. Have you faced him in the nursery? That's been 25 years, James. That's <laughs> why <laughs> going right back to the start of your playing career. Yeah, so that's, that's, that was late swing, I thought. So yeah. That's what really beat by. We're assuming that watching at home, you're following on the, the YouTube feed, and I think there's a version of Scottish Play Cricket. who have a separate, uh, distinct app for funneling the scores alongside the YouTube coverage. But was your counterpart doing it electronically? It was. The, it was. Yes. Um, but there, there is no integration between the Scottish system and play cricket so there, there is or there is none there is oh, none oh, I see. no so we had to manually enter all the uh, the players names not surprisingly when he entered Mike Rowlands he found somebody but it was different Mike considerably Rowlands. closer to here than uh, than his own mate. there's a Scottish Mike Rowlands anyway I, I hope it's working for you back home we're sort of broadcasting into the unknown and into the ether here and just taking pot shots at uh, hitting some of our loyal audience and following back in Albany. Um, you can reach us on the WhatsApp group and, and let us know what's coming through and what your thoughts are. Chris is just consulting his, his phone now as we, uh, we we gaze out on really what is an idyllic uh, uh, village green scene. That took an edge, flew off the, off the globe, I think, love maybe, yeah. Gone down to backward point where Lee Ainsworth does the fielding. Lee, Lee Beans shuffled into second slip now, that's interesting. He used to be a, a cover fielder. Yeah, well, Reedy would normally be there, of course, with Simon coming with us. Yeah, so everybody shifts, shifts one along, as it were. 
Reedy doing his second stint of, stint of wicket keeping in two days. A lot of squats there for any keeper, as you would know. Indeed. Mallows measured the trot to the wicket. Uh, quite a fast arm, really, which is where a lot of his pace and swing seems to come from. Yeah, another good over, just one run and that off the glove. Um, not a controlled shot by definition, so yeah, looking good. Very tight, very controlled. 24 for 3 off uh, 12, that really is, well, even my maths tells me that's 2 and over. Yeah, it's only 11 over, it's gone. That's uh, <laughs> no, just more than 2 and over, sorry. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, Steve's continuing. Scoreboard ahead of me, not for the first time. But yeah, we're, so we're in that sort of zone of um, only keeping things very tight. And just for comparison, Baldwin had 54 off the first 10 overs. Did they? Yeah. Uh, each 10 over block got progressively lower scoring. That's interesting. And, and this would have been the lowest 10 over of the game so far. Of the game, yes. Okay. Well, there you are. Statistically, you have it from the master statistician. Thank you, Chris. All well, courtesy of little Coles pens. Oh, that put to good use today. <laughs> uh, at last. <laughs> little Cole, if you're listening, we wish you well. We know that uh, you know your heart is very much in this village cricket side, and you are the resident scorer for this this mob. Uh, they love you to bits and wish you all the best wherever you're watching or listening from. Let's hear it for little Cole. There's a lot of photographers here. We have, uh, Sadly, we haven't got Robin Geddes here today, who's our sort of uh, photographer emeritus at uh, Albany, isn't he, Ray? Absolutely, yes. He and John Lewis, between them, have given, yeah, given John, us photo photographs over the years. John's not been seen with his camera of late, but he's no. recovering uh, from ill health, so good to see him lapping the ground. Yeah, and we wish John well if, you, if, if you've managed to tune in, John. I think one of your... Uh, family is, is in charge of audio visuals in your household, so hopefully they've given you the YouTube feed. Steve Charles. Oh, that's a big Yeah, but more, most importantly, it's making it difficult for them to score. Yeah. I think, you know, one man out in the deep, when you've got luxury of having nice. the key thing in this game is you can't be to come to ground, so you have to have the field to reflect where you're rolling from, the line, yeah. and I think it makes sense. They, they can afford to be a bit defensive here, they don't have to go from the hell on the attack. No. They just need to be pressure. Just strangle, 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 yes. which is what, uh, what they're doing. He's uh, a quick thinker, isn't he, um, Steve Charles? I think he ordered that uh, that change there. But um, and that was a, the last ball that over gave us one of those sort of bump ball crowd catches, which I'm, I'm a real sucker for. Them. I, I generally jump up and down and get hit <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, get uh, get caught out. Tumulty's on uh, spare helmet duties. He <laughs> must be doing. A number of Ks. He's a marathon runner of note, so it won't, won't bother him. But he's certainly exercising in 20, say 24 degrees heat today. Stan Mallows from the flat end. Bangs it. Oh, he makes it. Makes it. Oh, it took him time. And the, and the batsman is standing there. He's obviously not unimpressed, but you know what? Oh, he's, he's oh, actually he's indicated said. his pad, which is, I think, an offence, isn't it? To, yeah, yeah. To uh, point out where he thinks it hit. Well, there's one thing for sure. The umpire's not going to change his mind. Not at this point, no. And the score has already written it down in the book. Court Reed Bold Mallows. That is what will stand. That is the record. And it takes us to, what, 28? 4. 4. Yeah, I don't think there was any doubt in, 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 in any fielder's mind there. Batsman, who's a tall lad, actually, taller now on his way up than he appeared when he was crouching over his bat, has come off with that sort of look of 
injured innocence that, that um, that's been changed. So. Yeah, look, I'm not out in the middle, but the noise that we heard sounded very wooden. And you yeah. don't get that when you cloth your pad no. compared with nicking the ball. And my instinct, we are stood behind the stumps at this end. Yep. My now, that, that was definitely out. And we are uh, wholly unbiased, of course, yeah. as you probably picked up from the general <laughs> tone of the commentary. Once again, apologies to anybody um, who isn't a died in the wool avid uh, Albany supporter. Uh, if you know, if you don't like it, provide your own commentators. Uh, we are here doing a job, and we, we hope um, to sort of embroider in your, your afternoon's viewing experience. The, the gent who's gone in now, I think, is Zed. Rashid, yes. um, who has a reputation for teeing off, possibly even from ball one. Well, um, as did his brother. Yeah. But he didn't survive the first over. That's what, that was a, a key incision, wasn't yes. it, by, by Chris? We'd gone for 12 runs at that stage and then, and then winkled him out. Him. This is Sam Meadows' opportunity to do the same sort of thing. Hmm? Oh, mate. Cautious start from Zed, as he's known. Batting without a helmet. Mm. Is that right? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Batting with no, no headwear at all. So I don't think Sam Mullers would be impressed with that, do you? No. I mean, Sam's not quite as aggressive a bowler as his Chris, but I'm sure he'll see if he can get one to get him to his ribs. Oh, there we go. Oh, That's a don't mind it, mate. Uh, where's it? MS Dhoni was, was famous for that shot. What was it called? The helicopter yeah. shot or yeah. one, of, one of those sort of whirly gig? It's sort of inside out, yeah. so instead of hitting straight into the ground, he's, he's hit almost with a leading edge. That's I'm not sure he knew where he was hitting no. that other than hard and high. Yeah. Yeah. It has a kind of inside out, back to front, upside down quality to it, but it's very effective. Yes, and again, squirted away for four. They're looking for it down in the pines there. The ball's been found, and I think we're reinforcing the. Uh, Oh no, they're just making a change. Steve Charles is going down there. Jimmy Eccleston is coming back up to the ring. And that's, you put your, you've got Steve Charles and Chris Charles is here as well. There you've got hand. Victor Charles hands down there. I, I, I got a feeling that's not the last um, Evo that we're going to see from Zed. No, no. What do fielding restrictions limit us to at this stage in the, in the game, Chris? But that doesn't matter, James. Forget that. <laughs> Just had his leg pole knocked over. <laughs> it was actually, it was the same stroke, wasn't it? Exactly the same stroke. Uh, just wrong line, wrong ball. Uh, and I think with that demise of Zed, quite a lot of meagle hopes will go down with him. Leaving them at 32 for five. Uh, looking shaky in, in response to Albany's 187. Remains etched on the scoreboard there. He's... He, he is trudging off, isn't he? He's not a happy man. No, no, well, he probably thought he had to do something big and quick. What, off his second ball? Interesting. Third yeah, ball. but you see some players that just go like that, don't they? Uh, they don't wait, they don't test anything. And don't forget, he's, he's bowled eight overs. Yeah. He's had the benefits of seeing what the pitch can do. And I said to him, Charles, when we were looking around at the beginning of the innings, he never ceases to amaze me. People feel, see a track behave in a certain way, and then assume it's going to be completely different when they go out to bat. Yeah. Uh, that's just a definition of insanity. 20 minutes it? later, it's yeah. completely changed. It's there's, there's no light roller and brush going to change that. No, that's very true. The, um, the gentleman walking out, who's got a sort of Colin Milburn kind of look to him for uh, listeners of a certain vintage, he almost disappears as he, as he trudges down the slope there. At least half of him is obscured by the angle. Yeah, this is on the, the ground. Captain, isn't he, it? He's, he's, he's a left slinger. Left, left arm slinger. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I christened him perhaps a little unkindly. I think his name is Clark. Well, uh, you may re remember him from the scoreboard there. Um, and his name will be on your, on your screen so you can correct us live as you follow this last 16 clash from. Perthshire, Scotland, in quite army Scottish tropical conditions. So here's the skipper facing Mallows. It's a full length delivery which comes down on. Looks, uh, I described him as a slinger, as a, a gunslinger. He's, he's, I'd say he's a fighter. 
coming in at uh, 7 o'clock. Tests in there with a leg stump delivery, which probably going down there, but uh, it had uh, a little bit of nibble about it. Here we go, end of 13th. the 13th, leaving us on 32 for 5. We're well served here with an electronic scoreboard that ticks over nicely. Uh, I hope it corresponds with what you're seeing on your, on your screen. See, Charles, I think you're right. They'll both stay out now. He's, well, he must be into his uh, seventh. seventh over here. Come on, Come on, boy. So, yeah, you're right. You must bow out now. We're hoping to add at least more, one more wicket to his, his tally. That one, he, he pitches that up. And the keeper Reed is sort of uh, trying to tell us that something surprised him there. No, extra bounce, extra bounce, that's what must be. Down on his haunches now, Reed. And this one, safely negotiated. That's very much Vern's stock delivery, isn't it? And you, you do get forward to him and smother the, whatever spin in him. You know, he up. He varies quite a lot. Yeah, he's not a great turn of the ball, no. actually. He's, he, he's, both him and Tumulty vary the trajectory and, and the location of the delivery. Yeah, that one's gone across the outside. Is, it, is he one of the sort of organly arm ball specialists? Is that, yeah, I think that's a phrase that you and others have used over the years about. Well, Sophie Eccleston and, and, and other other spinners. Yeah, I mean the, the arm ball tends to be a more um, potent weapon for the left armer, who yeah. would normally turn the ball away, and their, their arm ball swings in and pins people LBW. Steve's arm ball, so to speak, goes on with the arm, so it can go outside the edge of the bat. So it might be a good delivery, but it's not always a wicket taking delivery. Well, that's what that one has just done, and uh, Alex Reed has disturbed the stumps with something, just as a reminder to the batsman that he's there. Gets through his overs quickly, Steve. Yes. Oh, very good. I think he, well, he's setting him up for something, I'm not quite sure what, and that's the end of the overs, so and maybe we won't find out. But there was a series of deliveries there which certainly kept things very tight. And, and this is where bowling in partnerships becomes very profitable. Mm. Extremely tight over Maiden from Steve. The pressure is now on the captain to do something. Sam's got himself into the rhythm at the other end. Scoreboard's not really going anywhere. Just meandering it to and over. So if there's a confident tone creeping into the commentary, you, you, you'll understand why that is the case. Although we've both been watching cricket, <laughs> playing cricket long enough to know that you, it's never over until the very, very end. That's a lovely uh, flay of a, of a it's not square going to drive. Four again. It's been unbelievable, James. It's slow. Oh. This outfield has been they, here today. They've, they've taken it through for three. It does, because it, not only does it slope and drains down in that direction when you expect it to run away, but you know, it's, it's well mowed and hard and fast. So, um, I think um, Ian Charles was saying that he thought it might be the actual texture of the grass. Quite a, There's a lot of fat chances, isn't there? Yeah, quite a sort of coarse uh, grass seed variety. But it makes for interesting cricket, because I mean, that was a, a, an all-run three. Mellows. Oh, there's a sharp intake of breath all around the ground there. That one beat the bat fair and square. Now I can hear the rattle kicking off in the field there. Lee Ainsworth, always the leader of the choir when it comes to geeing his bowlers up. I haven't bowled much himself these days. Yeah. That one is steered away through good, Gully down to third man, just a single. Chris Charles unleashes a lazy on the arm. Drink, the sunny, lad. Good athlete, Chris, isn't he, for a, 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 a big yes. big unit. Yes. Mallows again. 
Again. He's, he's done him again outside with lift and a little bit of movement. I'm just wondering how it might be before Mr. Banyan comes into the game, not as a bowler. As I imagine well. you were suggesting we, 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 we turn to Ben as. No, no, no. No, you're I'm, thinking of his first slip. I'm, I'm thinking of the neck coming here. He's, in fact, that's interesting. You, he's, he's taken half a step back. Oh, he's, he's back. He's back up again. Hands on. On knees, he, he, he's got that sort of both esque approach to first slipping, hasn't he? When you just you, you re, you're completely relax, you put your hands wherever they're comfortable, and then you spring into action. He doesn't drop many. He's, he's undoubtedly the best slip fielder mm -hmm. I've ever played with over the years. Well, and in, in fact, prior to him taking residence in the slips, he always used to feel with extra cover. Um, and it's no coincidence he catches a lot because he practices a lot. Actually practices his slip fielding. Yeah. 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 Right, we're having a drinks break now. Let's uh, check what's on the WhatsApp. We might get a drink for ourselves, James. Good idea, Chris. We'll take a short break here and be back. And you just drop ten pound on the floor. <laughs> it's funny. Ten stuff. Put that to your collection. Yeah. Burgers, are you? Do you need them? Um... I've got one on the Are you going there? Okay. Yeah. So here we are back after the, um, the end of the, of the drinks break. Uh, it's, a, it's a day when drinks are much needed. We've been instructed uh, on health and safety grounds to add additional drinks breaks during the course of the afternoon. So they will punctuate the day's proceedings. And uh, yeah, we've been told to give the boundary riders plenty of uh, rehydration as we do our circuits going left for wickets around this very picturesque ground must be five six seven different dominant species of beech and birch and uh, chestnut tree encircling the ground pines down the one uh, one boundary 
uh, almost as high as the as the nift at Alderney. Would you say? Some of that might be helpful. Yeah, thank you. Just a quick note to my wife that uh, I've just been handed the sunscreen lotion, and I am applying it liberally. Uh, thank you, everybody listening at home. I think I can safely say that we, we must have, what, upwards of 50, 60 avid listeners back in Albany, Chris? We think so, yes. At Not least. necessarily in Albany itself, but... Uh, yeah, well, that's right, Albany, Hillsby, Frodham, Chester, where else? Tarvin. Yeah. I'll be following local boys, Sam Mallows and Andy Bendin. I'm a bit disappointed there aren't many more people bearing in mind we were very limited on how many we could bring. There's probably 30 cars here parked around the outfield. Yes, it's. Uh, I, I was told that it could grow steadily during the afternoon, but I think there's probably a peak crowd around about now. Yes. Yeah. That was a four stroke, outside edge, squirts away. Jimmy in pursuit. Athletic, balletic little pick, turn and throw there from Jim. Really good boy. And uh, Steve Charles, I think this is his last over, would that be right? Yeah. Bowler's restricted to, to just eight in a 40 over game. Yeah. Well, he's done a job here for us. Absolutely. Really has offered the, the cap. I think we could move to, to ask him to open the bone. Every yeah. now and again, uh, Rollo pulls a rabbit out of the hat like that. And uh, I, I was trying to persuade some of the legal faithful to join us on air here, but there's a general sense around the ground that the scoreboard pressure is quite severe. Well, I'm not drawing any conclusions yet, but uh, there is a, a vehicle is making its way towards the exit gate. I think, it, I think a couple more wickets, um, yeah, I'm afraid to start the car might be. We, we, we could, you know, and the, the dreaded David Lloyd phrase might come up. All right, there, Benny. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. You bring that beer with you, James. Procure it here. Uh, oh, the I know that's gone up in the way. Um, this is McEwen's finest. Uh, other local beverages are available. <laughs> But um, this comes from the spa down the road. Oh, right. If you're interested, you can help yourself to a couple in the, uh, in the cool box. I'll, I'll hang for a Thank you. Thank you for the well, you know, luckily we're on our form of radio, I suppose, rather than TV, so we're, <laughs> we're okay, I think. Good Jim. Really good Jim. shows up again. Oh, he's covered a lot of ground, hasn't he? He was yep. deep... Uh, Mid off, and now he's down there in the covers, flopping around, chuntering to himself, wanting to know when he's going to bowl, which end he's going to bowl from. Mallows. The fires went down the leg side. There's one of those appeals, it's been signaled as a wide. Is that one of those appeals that's trying to persuade the umpire? Hey, greedy! Perhaps it was a touch. Or... I didn't hear a noise. It's a very good one handed, left handed take. Always worth celebrating when they stick in the mix. Yeah. <laughs> now, Keeper Reed flung himself to the left there. Uh, you sometimes do that to try and distract the batsmen so they don't take a bye, but there was no buy on offer there. No, no. Here comes Mallows. Nuts out. Ah! Oh, you could hear that, could you? Yeah. It was a very standard appeal. Everybody seemed to know what was going on there. And that's the wicket you were looking for, uh, Chris? Yep. We're joined by Ian Charles here, who's, I think, safe to say, looking uh, 
reasonably confident. And bronze. <laughs> Pink. <laughs> Is that from your, your recent trip to, to Portugal or just this afternoon? No, no probably Ian? not. Probably not. Oh, you've got the wraparound shades on. It's, it's, it's quite a look you've, you've uh, cultivated there, Mr. Charles. <laughs> Looking uh, very dapper, very dashy. And, uh, oh, bye, bye. Just a brief round of applause for the departing batsman. Courtesy ready. He's not, uh, not troubled the score as much. But yeah, Ian, you'd be pleased with the idea of opening the, the bowling from both ends with the Charles, wouldn't you? Isn't that a good, always a good idea? That's a good idea. <laughs> I don't think it's suited to today because of his turning pitch. To bring Stephen on first up. So Steve was able to take this awkward yeah. hit where you he's run up a short mouth to be hampered by the switch of the hump. I would guess taunting. I think Stephen's done to uh, he's done his eight goals and well done James. Okay. Shortening his run up, run up isn't he? If he's, if he's Ready to go from you, Hawes. Well, go. Just going to check the book. Keep looking away, Sammy, though. Eight overs, three maidens, three for 30. So if you didn't catch that, it's eight overs, three maidens, three for 13 for Steve Charles. Yeah, mate. Uh, sort of match shaping contribution. Well, good. Well, well, Steve. That's, that's his afternoon done for uh, batting and bowling. Lots of fielding still to come. I suspect he'll find himself under a high ball at some stage. There goes a high ball. But it's safe. Captain has sort of slaughtered slog, it away. A 100 caps by Andy Hill. Oh, really? Was from that? His, from his bench. And he just barely moved, barely flickered and muscle and snaffled it. Well done, Andy. Uh, a much underrated talent there in the field. Superb driver, Andy, of a, of a vehicle. And uh, proving himself to be pretty nifty down in the car corner down there. But that was four runs, much needed by, by Magel. They've moved to 45 for six. Here comes Jimmy. And we've got uh, we've got our wish here, which is Jimmy Eccleston shortened his run. <laughs> that really is as short as I've ever seen it. it. It's got shorter over the years, wouldn't you say, Chris? I think so, yes. As, he, as he gets older. Here. Well, I don't think it's so much that. It, sometimes people get rhythm out of run-ups and some people it's a complete waste of energy. Mm. If you get that momentum off five, six, eight strides, why 120? Yeah. Well, I think Jimmy's a man who understands the advantages of conserving energy on a hot afternoon like this. He's probably working up a fairly powerful thirst at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to see. We've got Steve Charles at deep square leg. Uh, Joe's just come up to a more orthodox mid-wicket. Um, and Ainsley is deepish mid-on. The rest of the field... Oh, sorry, Sam's down at fine leg. Most of the fields are on the off side. He's, in the got, ring. he's yeah. got to bowl on the outside that off stump. You've got the banners at slip and then the, the ring of four. All saving one. No boundaries on the outside, on the offside, sorry. Yep, well there's, there's Jimmy's challenge right there. Bowl to your field. Gosh, his run up really is only, only maybe six, seven paces. But, but he doesn't need to put anything, there's no need for him to bang it into the wicket, just no. put it up there in that fuller chair area. And yeah, if they fancy the chances and start hitting it over the top, then I'm sure we'll see Charlie and Lee, who are currently at fairly orthodox mid-off, mid and come back 10, 20 yards. A little bit of extra demon in that one. He, he can bend his back every now and again, Jimmy, and, and push one through. Yeah, that it's moved, moved through the air and, and bounced as well. Really that's, I think that's been the trick on this pitch today, is that if you've, you've not had to bang it in to get to, it to bounce. And the slower bowlers, not that Jimmy thinks he's a slow bowler, 
have actually got something out of that. I see Alex Reid not standing up to him yet, perhaps not quite trusting the, the consistency of the pitch bounce. But they don't need to. They don't need to have that person there. Um, it is a little bit inconsistent in the bounce. The scoreboard is very voluntarily ours at the moment. Uh, there's no need to stand up and potentially leak by Yeah, no, you're right. It's a, it's a well set field. It's doing, doing a job here, as is Jimmy. Keeping his man quiet. No doubt uh, Sister Sophie will be following from wherever she's preparing for her game. North and South, they play South Africa in a one-day game. I'm not sure, but did I hear Paul saying she'd been hit on the head in practice yesterday? Oh no, I did that. Got it. That's breaking news. That's a scoop. No, so I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not totally confident of my facts, but I know she got hit. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it was fielding or batting. In the nets, but we'll, we'll practice, yeah. yeah. All right, well, if anybody knows more about that than, than we do, yeah, then let us know. Our best wishes will be with Sophie and her build up to the next England cap, which I think I'm right in saying will be her 50th one day international wow. cap to go with whatever it is. Good at the number of T20s and four test caps. Nice to know. At the tender age of 23. At 23. Quite astonishing story of a young woman making almost a certain talent. Uh, here, uh, this is a club which boasted two Scottish Mills internationals, Annette and Andy Trump. Uh, both played in Scotland and international competitions. Mainly one day internationals, but of course, Scotland don't play tests, do they? Sam Mallows. Well, it was a full toss. It was a full toss, and I think it shook the batsman as well. A bit of a tin. A haggis pie. Yep. Mallows is has eased into his work. He's, uh, I think, realises that he's there to bottle up an end, keep it tight, uh, let the scoreboard create the pressure with it, which it is, and. Captain has hoisted that over the mid wicket boundary for six. Six is signalled. It's been signalled in the crowd there. That one was a bit a bit too square even for Andy Hill, wasn't it? Yeah. Disappeared under the copper beaches and is being searched for by two dogs and a small girl at the moment. Between them, I'm sure they'll come up with uh, a ball. Sort of ricochet towards the wall of Belmont Park on the far side of the road there. Oh, Charlie's gone over the fence. Oh, we've got a delegation, an orderly delegation. Yeah, it's almost like going into uh, into Chris Bebbington's backyard, isn't it? The crop. <laughs> Not quite. Or uh, bursting through the nettle field in Church Field. Fielders have taken the opportunity to, to sit down on their haunches, grab a breather. Uh, I think there's a bottle of water being run out for somebody. Gloves. Gloves for somebody else. Call for burgers. Sorry, there was a break in play there. The call is getting water on. So there's a show of defiance here from the, the Meagle captain, who as uh, suggested on commentary earlier on this afternoon is a fighter, a gunslinger who is not going to go down without a fight. But his side are listing here at 53 for 6 and uh, shipping water. That's Mallows just steering it wide of the off stump. Tempting the drive. No joy. Not for batsman, not for bowler. The sky really is uh, saltire blue. It's that Scottish flag 
intensity of colour with a couple of vapour trails quite beautifully picking out the, uh, the saltire, the cross, the white cross against the, the all blue sky. Uh, you, you could not ask for a more postcard pretty afternoon for village cricket. Mallows. Oh, and that's a straight drive which is threatening the side screen. We may hear a clunk. We have heard a clunk. Signaling six up against the side screen. Uh, Captain Courageous doing the business here. Just, just suggesting that there could be a kick in the meagle tail. Nine for six off 18. Slow scoring rate, but uh, there goes another boundary, I would say. Scudding away. Down to fine leg. Charlie Fletcher, he's got to dive under a motor car there to, to get the thing. No, he's asked somebody else to do that. Be glad to know, Sarah. He's not getting his whites dirty. As a slightly um, lethargic air to, to some of the body language in the field at the moment, it really is a stiflingly hot day to be out there fielding, bowling. Jimmy gives his cap to the umpire and uh, grabs the ball back into the fray. Now he bowls that heavy ball. Back of a length. Happy to do that all afternoon, I think, Jim. If he gets his full eight overs here, he'll churn them out from this end, which uh, he's made his own. Um, it's pitched up and driven away for a careful single. They're looking for two. It's like this field there, but no chance. The second one would have been suicidal, I think. Between Rowlands and Fletcher, they're headed under control. You hear the lone voice of Lee Ainsworth yelling encouragement. And he's in business now as he falls forward and collects that one in mid on. He uses the sweat from his brow, or maybe it's his brew cream, I'm not sure which, which is. Uh, Polish up the ball. I'm sure they, they still use Broadway these days. Jimmy Roberts, you can probably tell me. Now that's Jimmy's reward for a very niggly, penetrating spell that he's got the, the ball to pop up into the covers. Twelfth Man Burgers rushes on with copious amounts of water. Unusual for Bergstrand to be seen around that amount of water, but there, there he goes. And the next man is quick to the crease. The batsman's name, sir? Barry. Barry. Thank you. We're operating here without the benefit of a schoolwork in front of me, so at home watching YouTube, you're probably much better informed than I am, certainly with uh, names and numbers. But uh, the numbers are stacking up in Orvenley's favour at the moment. 64 for 7. Target is still that 187. I think I'm going to be joined by Sam Hill here, who do her first stint on commentary. Uh, I'll just wait till she's within earshot and then... Not well played, shot. Skipper. Not what about it, mate? Go on, Sam. You've got a whole <laughs> faithful set of viewers and listeners back home. We're dying to hear what your, uh, what your take on the game is so far. What do you think? Oh, that much. Surprise. I'm very glad to hear it. Confirmation from uh, Orlandy's mother superior, Sam Hill. Thank you, Sam, for getting us here safely and looking after us as you do. Jimmy Eccleston, one of your brood. Full ball. Dugout. Keeper. Reed. Slips a glove and he bowls it back to mid off. He may be suggesting that. Conditions favour his particular brand of dibbly dobblies. 
let's see what, uh, what transpires. I'd love to see Alex take off the, the gloves and, and bowl an over or two. Uh, even Leo would, uh, would pay to watch that. And, and Jimmy gets that one past the outside edge. This new batsman is, uh, I think, going to go after Jim if he, he feels the ball's in his arc, which on that occasion it wasn't. 64 for 7. And uh, all well in, in Camp Orville, he sounds. Good to hear. Andy Fielding at the moment. He was on the boundary. <laughs> he sat on the bench. He's going to be like a prune if he sits there for much longer. A prune? Gosh, that's, that's, that's hard. Are you really? Uh, Did you notice earlier on he latched onto a ball that was hit just past him? Nonchalantly fielded it with one hand and flicked it back to the. To the, to the advancing field, I think much to everybody's astonishment, at least his own. <laughs> I'm sure Ash Hill's been giving him uh, fielding tips and fielding practice. Ash, I hope you're having a good time down at Upton there, you and Peter Young, yeah. representing uh, Albany in the thirds. Thanks for the work that you're doing. We've got a change of personnel here. Dave Bergstrand going on, replacing Lee Ainsworth, who has some sort of batsman's injury. Lee? sprained a wrist briefly. Lee Ainsworth has sprained his wrist. What on earth could have caused that? Uh, he'll be back, I've no doubt. And in the meantime, Dave Burgess, poised at cover there, prowling the covers like a panther. It was not needed on this occasion. That was Joe uh, Hornby going to ground. Joe and his floppy son had very thoughtful addition to your luggage, Joe. I think you came in from Chester Races yesterday and you obviously had a floppy sun hat with you. Ben Tumulty has replaced Mallows at the top end. Interestingly, they're bowling Ben from the flatter end. And he's got this quick step run and fire method. That's uh, Bergstrand's first piece of fielding in the, in the game. So casual underarm toss back to the keeper. So Tumulty will take the top end, and uh, his job will be just to keep the pressure there, which he does with a delivery that, oh, I think could result in a run out. It has. Charlie Fletcher hit the stumps absolutely dead eye from backward point. No, sorry, uh, Chris Charles. Chris Charles, I, I've got my my uh, gun field is mixed up there. Uh, so that was an ill-advised run, clearly resulting in the run out. The spirit Meagle still further, who have now slumped to 64 for 8, I think. Wicket's just going up behind me there. The scorer Eccleston struggling to keep up with the pace of events here. He'll, uh, he'll get on it. There you are, there you are, he's on it. 64 for 8 of 20 overs, which uh, is the midway point in terms of overs. But uh, judging from the, the batsman who's sort of strewn his kit around the changing room, it's not going well for the home side here. Who have put on a lovely show and a great display here today of cricketing, hospitality and groundsmanship. Kept a good crowd of oh, a good hundred or so watered and fed and entertained. But I think they know that they are witnessing the end of Meagle's village campaign. They have represented Scotland for a good number of years in this competition. And I think reached this uh, last 32 on, on a number of occasions. I'm joined by Lee Ainsworth, who's got a, a wrist injury. He's got uh, an ice pack on it. It's, it's a fairly sort of egg-shaped bump. I'm Lee, would you like to describe what, what happened there or what went That's wrong? That's when Sam Mallows uh, high-fived me. And I'm not even joking. We have uh, an unusual injury here. <laughs> uh, a high-five sprain. Did it? Did he miss or...? or oh, yeah, he missed, yeah. You guys He's got done you, something to me. I've told you, you've got to practice this high-fiving. Oh. It's not as simple as it looks. The pain, mate. Really? 
Oh, it's your left hand, though, mind you. So yeah, it, but look at the difference. Well, uh, I can see there is a, a significant difference there. But you're right hand, are you? Are you not? Yeah, yeah. For most important yeah. functions, yeah. So you're uh, you'll be all right. You'll, you'll be fine. I'm sorry about that. But it does give Dave, Dave Bergstrand his, his chance to yeah. strut his stuff. I, I would suggest you get into the shade, keep the ice on that hand. Yeah, I'm going. And uh, you're not needed as a bowler any longer. You're su no. surplus okay. to bowling requirements. So. Does it hurt to bend your back? Yeah. Take a, take a break, mate. Yeah, but you can. It's not. No, no, I can't. Anymore. It's that way it hurts more. Soft Lee Ainsworth has been professionally it. tended to yeah. by Sam Hill. Staff Nurse Hill, who's on the job. <laughs> Batsman flashes outside the off stump. He rehearses the stroke now. It's nothing like the one he's just played, so maybe he's learnt a thing or two from facing some very consistent probing seam from Jimmy Eccleston, who's uh, very much made this his end. That one is guided into the covers. There's no run there. I think Miva will now be a little bit cautious about taking runs to the likes of Chris Fletcher. Oh, Charlie Fletcher, rather. Chris, you might get away with a single, but uh, Charlie and Chris Charles have both demonstrated rocket arms. Jimmy, same stroke. This time he's just pushed it to fielders right and gets his run. Singles uh, will not do it for, for Meagle from this point. They, they'll need boundaries and quite a lot of them. Uh, 120 odd runs short with overs in hand but only two wickets sitting there slightly nervously in the hutch. Jimmy starts his run, pulls out, starts again, sh even shorter on the second attempt. And uh, there he goes, firing it outside the off stump. Just, uh, in a sense, going through the motions now because he knows that the pressure is all with him. And really all he has to do on this wicket is put it there and let the slightly variable pace of the wicket do the rest. There he goes. That's a full, full of delivery. Almost a floaty. Delivery. I don't think he'd thank me for that description, but it uh, was effective as the last ball of the inning of the of the over. Uh, Jimmy catches his cap, drops his cap, picks it up again, drops it a second time, and finally manages to attach it to his head. Well done, Jim. Ian Charles is circumnavigating the ground, going. Uh, Left for wickets, Ian? Left for wickets, Ian yeah. confirms that is the, the approved direction. And uh, it's a big ground. It's, it's 30 yard circle, it's 20 yards away from us on the boundary here. Ben Tumulty, weaning away, left arm over. Back to his mark. Quick flourish, trim, polish, ball up in the air again. A bit of flight this time, and uh, keeping it tight, no run. Just had a tweet in here from uh, Jonty, that's not, not Jonty Rhodes, but uh, somebody equally athletic and talented. Uh, Colin Jonty Jones. I know John, he's probably gone to his mum's for a Sunday roast and he's watching us with his feet up on uh, babysitting duties. I hope I've got, got the right Jonty there. It may, may have been Jonty Rhodes, who knows? He, an avid follower of all forms of cricket. But no, I think it was probably Colin Jones on this occasion. And Tumulty has absolutely done his man like a kipper. And uh, he comes with that sort of shrug of the shoulders. He knows he's done a good job there. Chris, how did he do that one? What, 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 what was the process for setting him up? Have you been watching yeah, Tumulty at work? It's just pressure, isn't it? Ben 
been very successful in this tournament over the last two, three seasons. He varies his delivery trajectory, and uh, yeah, the guy was just trying to work one. And I guess it's the basis of you miss, I hit, and that's exactly what happened. He hit middle stump. Yeah, he has had a. He, he, he sort of raises his game for, for village um, knockout games, isn't he? He's been another one of the. I was called who doesn't seem to rise to the occasion. Yeah, the, 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 there's been a chemistry that's kind of evolved um, the last three years. I think the togetherness of the team, initially perhaps driven by the inability to do anything else in the summer of 2020. Yeah, and, you know, COVID, the, the, the yeah. age profile of the squad now, with sort of uh, mid 20s to mid 30s, are probably. A lot of them are in their absolute prime. Yep. And I think a point that I've heard you make in the past, which is the, the nature of the village tournament is such that you, you're meeting often teams about whom you know very little, that you've never played against before, you've got zero expectations, and so you can only play the, the ball and the man in front of you, and, and, and you're not playing reputation. No, ab uh, absolutely. And, and, that, and that's part of the attraction. You know, over the years, you do play central teams year in year out and the opportunity to go on the road so to speak that's our LBW game Trimulty, uh, uh, is sitting on a hat trick next time he bowls certainly in the village competition uh, he's cleaned it up for Albany I think we can confidently announce that Albany progressed to the last 16 which is which is next Rainford. week uh, Rainford just just north of Wigan just north of St Helens just north of St Helens I apologise to anybody in Wigan who was listening uh, Rainford will be Albany's next opponents. Having disposed of the Eagle, no more than 23 overs, a convincing victory, 187 for 9 off the full 40 overs, plays 65 all out off 23 overs. We'll try and get a few post match interviews for you with some of the significant players. Trimulty finishing the game with two wickets and two balls. Uh, Lee Ainsworth finishing the game with a, uh, an unusual injury occurred while high-fiving Sam Mellows. Uh, a, a, a tricky exercise, obviously, and uh, one that will require a bit more off-field practice, I think. But here come the Albany side, looking well pleased with their work. Uh, a good atmosphere prevailing, I think, between both teams. There's plenty of rueful laughter from the from the Magal crowd who've been superb hosts and very sporting competitors. But their Village Cup campaign has come to an end and Albany's continues. Well, we, we may even get a post-match interview with Skipper Rowlands if he can make himself available. Otherwise we'll have to make do with one of the, the lesser lights in the, in the Albany mob. We've got the caps all back to front and all over the place. Uh, a happy a happy crowd. I think within moments we'll hear the song coming out of the dressing room. And uh, 11, or in fact with, with Bergstrand, 12 players who can be well pleased with their afternoon's work. Albany are on the march. Thank you. 